remove the four screws from the side panel. Remove the panel. Unscrew and remove the air filter assembly. Remove the foam filter and observe for cleanliness. If the foam filter is dirty, clean it with warm soapy water, rinse and allow it to dry thoroughly, or clean in a non-flammable solvent and allow it to dry. Dip the foam element in clean engine oil, then squeeze out all the excess oil. The engine will smoke when it is started if too much oil is left in the filter. Reinstall the air filter assembly. Reinstall the engine axis panel on the unit, ensuring that all four screws are fastened properly. Look and listen for exhaust leaks while the engine is running. If there are any leaks, have them repaired before continuing operation. Check for dirt and debris and clean as necessary. Ensure the generator is on a level surface. Allow the engine to cool. Remove the four screws from the side panel. Remove the panel. Take out the oil filler cap and clean the dipstick. Check the oil level by reinserting the oil filler cap without rotating it. Remove the oil filler cap and examine the oil level. If the oil level is at or below the minimum oil level mark, refill the oil to the maximum oil level mark. Reinstall the oil filler cap and tighten securely. Reinstall the engine axis panel on the unit, ensuring that all four screws are fastened properly. Check the fuel level by removing the fuel tank cap to visually check the level. Refuel if the level is too low. Add ethanol shield to the fuel tank as directed on the bottle. Replace the fuel tank cap and tighten securely. Allow the engine to cool. Remove the four screws from the side panel. Remove the panel. Ensure the generator is on a level surface. Place a pan beside the generator. Remove the oil filler cap and install the oil drainage spout. Tilt the unit and allow the oil to completely drain into the pan. Refer to the user manual for how to properly dispose of your used oil. Unscrew the drainage spout. Use a funnel to fill the engine with oil. Refer to the user manual to see which oil to use. Do not overfill the oil reservoir. Reinstall the oil filler cap and tighten securely. Reinstall the engine axis panel on the unit, ensuring that all four screws are fastened properly. Unscrew and remove the spark plug axis panel and screws. Remove the ignition coil from the spark plug and remove the spark plug with the spark plug wrench provided. Inspect the spark plug and clean any dirt from the electrodes with a wire brush. If the electrodes are worn or show signs of wear, replace the spark plug. Measure the electrode gap with the spark plug gauge and adjust accordingly, ensuring the gap is between 0.7 and 0.9 millimeters. Reinsert the spark plug carefully. Tighten with the spark plug wrench. Be careful not to over tighten the spark plug. 
Tighten it half a turn when installing a new spark plug and tighten it a quarter turn when reinstalling an old spark plug. Reattach the ignition coil. Reinstall the spark plug access panel. Before transporting your generator, be sure to turn it off, close the fuel valve, and let the engine cool. While transporting your generator, be sure to keep it at a level position in order to prevent spillage. Position an approved gasoline container with the funnel beside the unit. Ensure the fuel cutoff valve is in the off position. Disconnect the fuel line and place it in the funnel. Turn on the fuel cutoff valve and drain the tank. Once the tank is drained, turn the fuel cutoff valve to the off position and reconnect the fuel line. Position the container under the carburetor and then loosen the drain screw. Allow the fuel to completely drain and then reinsert the drain screw. Reinstall the engine access panel on the unit, ensuring that all four screws are fastened properly. Remove the battery access panel from the unit. Locate and disconnect the connectors from the battery wiring harness and the main wiring harness. Reinstall the battery access panel to the unit, ensuring that the screw is fastened properly. Always read your user manual and follow warnings to reduce the risk of personal injury.